Thank you. So the next portion of this presentation is really going to be um, centered around this particular project, um, the work that we've done so far, and the work that's left. Um, so believe it or not, uh, this project actually started um, almost two years to the day. Uh, the contract was executed on January 22nd of 2020. Um, and we made some uh, fairly decent progress, uh, and then subsequently the, the project was uh, put on hold, and now we're restarting it. Um, but the, the city put uh, what's called the request for proposals out for this project, um, and that being a comprehensive general plan update. And the focus of the project um, was multifaceted. Um, so first it was to produce a plan that's both uh, innovative and contemporary. So the existing general plan um, was adopted in 1999. It is the plan that is still um, used by the city. Um, and since 1999, we, we know that the world is a little bit different. Livingston is a little bit different. Uh, community um, has shifted, uh, and so has um, state laws, which is another reason uh, why the general plan is being updated. So it, Jim had touched on some new state laws that uh, have come down. It seems like every year we're having to interpret new state law um, and uh, find a, a way to assist cities and counties in implementing those, um, kind of the larger topics of being climate change, environmental justice, and looking at hazards. And so when we look specifically for environmental justice, I know Jim had touched on it earlier, um, the state requires cities and counties to analyze uh, various census tracts within their jurisdiction um, and look at a, a host of metrics uh, to see if there is a disproportionate um, burden placed on certain census tracts, those being poverty, um, uh, linguistic isolation. And so as uh, part of this project, we were conducting an environmental justice analysis of Livingston. Um, also hazards, uh, the state is, um, has required uh, much more in-depth analysis on evacuation routes, um, and looking at both flood hazards and fire hazards. And so this general plan update was really um, also going to be centered around uh, bringing, uh, implementing uh, current best standards and, and also uh, state law mandates. Um, diversity and inclusivity as well, that really ties back to environmental justice. Community outreach was a large portion um, and was, uh, was emphasized in at the outset of this project and uh, we've, structured this project and our scope of work to really capitalize on that. And then emerging trends, um, as I had mentioned, we're not in 1999 anymore, so economic shifts. Um, if we look back at uh, just shopping trends in general, if we would have thought that majority of shopping is done online now, a couple of years back, I don't think people would have really believed that. Um, and so it's finding and uh, it's creating goals, policies, and programs in your general plan to. Um, to help kind of usher in this kind of new year. Um, additionally, uh, the general plan was centered around smart growth. Um, so that was really leaning into determining priority areas for development um, and also developing goals and policies that would focus on accommodating growth through infill and strategic planning annexations. Additionally, uh, land use was a, another focus, so uh, evaluating vacant and underutilized land um, and looking at policies for, uh, for growth um, and for alternatives in land uses. And then economic stability and vitality, of course, uh, looking at downtown preservation, um, working with the greater uh, Merced um, County and other local jurisdictions to see if there's uh, cross-cutting topics that the general plan could involve and then uh, economic development plan implementation. So the project has a total of eight phases. Um, we are currently on phase five, which means that we've already started the project. Uh, that project initiation was in spring of 2020, and that started with a city tour and a kickoff meeting. Um, so we sat in this very room, um, spoke with the council and the commission at that time, um, and uh, picked their brain as to what they felt um, the general plan should focus on. Uh, we opened that up for public comment and received a, a lot of great feedback. 
that meeting really uh, pushed us and propelled us into starting to prepare the plan in which we got into phase two, which was we developed project branding, uh, conducted a series of stakeholder interviews, um, and then held a, a general plan forum. Um, we have also prepared an existing conditions and trends workbook, which I'll touch on uh, in a little bit later in this presentation, but that would be phase three. It's really just a, a report, um, a comprehensive report of the city. Um, and then uh, we did community and guiding principles. And this was phase four was, was where we had left off when, before the project was put on hold. Um, so that was, included a joint study session, uh, an open house, and then multiple newsletters. Uh, the project and that, so I'll say the community and guiding principles, uh, actually the community had adopted community and guiding, uh, community vision and guiding principles in June of 2021. Um, and I'll, show those on the screen in just a moment. Uh, but where we left off was this evaluating alternatives phase. And that's where we look at various land use concepts, growth concepts, development concepts, um, some being uh, looking at potential annexations, some being infill. The important part of the alternatives process, though, is, is to emphasize that it's, it's just theoretical. It's, it's hypothetical. We're, we're looking at um, uh, potential development within the next 20 to 30 years. And so there's a lot of, it's just kind of a math game. Um, from that alternatives phase, uh, once a alternative would be selected, that would really kind of push us forward and propel us through the rest of the plan. Um, but we never really got to that point yet. Um, we worked initially with uh, city staff um, to develop some preliminary alternatives, and then uh, the project was put on hold. Um, but if we look to the remaining phases, we have a uh, phase six, which is actually preparing the general plan. And this is where um, we start drafting and updating those various elements that Jim was touching on earlier. So land use, circulation. Um, this is where we would include the newer elements like the environmental justice element as well. Um, that, at least initially, we were anticipating a six to eight month to um, complete all those elements. It's important to note that when the city uh, initially had started this project, it was envisioned that this new general plan would be a kind of a wholesale rewrite of the 1909 general plan. Um, so as part of that process, we conducted a, it's called a general plan audit, where we took every goal, policy, and implementation program. Um, at the time, the contract planner with the city, um, we worked alongside them and uh, went through each of those goals, policies, and programs to make sure that they were um, still reflective of community values. Um, and then uh, after we, we prepare our general plan, we move into the environmental review process. Um, that would be handled by our subconsultant, RINCON. Um, and Hopefully, at the end of that, uh, after a successful uh, environmental review, we, we hope for a successful adoption, which would be uh, phase eight. Um, so I touched on some of these, but I'll just go through some of the work that we've con completed so far. It has been quite some time since we've um, been in front um, of you all again. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, at the outset of the project, we created project branding. Um, this was the logo that was selected um, and was designed for this particular project. Uh, we choose logos to create transparency and also uh, to create visual interest. Um, and it allows the general public to, uh, it creates a recognizable image for the general public to follow along with. We also have a project website, and that's uh, Livingston uh, City 2040. I uh, would highly recommend everyone to uh, check out the website if you have not. This is really the hub uh, for the project. This is where we post our uh, documents. This is where you can submit comments, um, sign up for our newsletter. Um, this is where we post events that are coming up, workshops, and where we also report out on the, the status of the project. All of the documents that I will touch on next have, are up on that website. So if you would like to see the documents and deliverables that have been prepared thus far, they all are on the website for access. Um, as part of our website, we also have interactive community engagement. Uh, part of this, as I had touched on earlier, community engagement was a, a large portion of this project. 
Um, so having uh, tools that uh, would allow easy accessibility for all members of the public. We have the ability to do full translation um, on our website. Uh, right now it's uh, available to be translated in both uh, Punjabi and in Spanish. Uh, and then all of our materials that we post are also um, fully translatable as well. One of the things that I, I really think that sets Mentor Harnish apart is, is our continued engagement and, and outreach. So we, as part of this project, are, are also have been scoped to put out periodic newsletters and updates. Uh, those are sent out via our email contact list. So if you had signed in this evening, you will likely uh, receive a newsletter at some point down the road. Um, but this gives us project, this gives the, the general public project update and project status. Um, a lot of this, this are also posted on our website, um, but have gone out through our mailer lists as well. And then mapping. So uh, we, this is a, a large portion of this project is, is compiling uh, mapping information and, and data um, and uh, presenting in a way that makes sense, uh, being that the, the general plan hasn't been updated since 1999. There was a lot of mapping that uh, as one would assume, not necessarily the most accurate. So compiling a database um, that is accurate um, and currently uh, that reflects uh, what's currently on the ground is extremely important. It sets the, um, the foundation for the rest of the general plan. So we have prepared, uh, this is just an example of one of the maps just showing the boundaries, but this is kind of the template and the style that we've picked. Um, our maps will then be used to, uh, you will be used for across all the elements, so specifically, I'm thinking of the circulation element, which is a really important one, um, which also has its own element. Uh, GHD is our sub-consultant on that. Um, and then the existing conditions and trends uh, workbook. So uh, the existing conditions and trend workbook is really a snapshot in time. Um, we, we completed this in 2020, in September, um, and it evaluates a multitude of topics in the city. So we look at um, public utilities, land use, um, economics, job, population growth. Um, we had a preliminary analysis on environmental justice. Um, it looks at what kind of uh, trends exist in the city and what can we reasonably expect in the future. Um, and it sets the baseline conditions on the ground today. Um, this existing conditions and trend work, workbook would then be used to inform uh, the rest of the general plan um, and more specifically um, the environmental review phase. And then uh, we crafted a, a vision and guiding principles for this project as well. And so the, the vision is really a statement that is inspirational and sets the key values and aspirations for the general plan. Whereas the guiding principles are more the fundamental kind of doctrine that are used to guide development of the goals and policies. So in June of 2021, uh, we uh, had a, an adopted vision statement. Um, I won't read it for you, but I'll leave it up for just a moment. And then with that vision statement, we also have uh, five guiding principles. And so what, number one was to cultivate a downtown renaissance, uh, balance growth and agricultural land preservation, uh, offer recreational opportunities, foster economic growth, and maintain multicultural assets. And then uh, community workshops. So. Uh, Transparency is, is a large portion of this project um, and also creating goals and vision that is representative of the community. Um, we can, under, as consultants, we can understand your community on a data level. We can pop open census information, but it's, what really matters is actually getting out and talking with members of the public that, and, and hearing their lived experiences. Um, 
identifying what people's assets, issues, and opportunities are beyond um, what a computer screen shows. And the one way that we, uh, only the real, the tr true way to really get that information is to go out into the public. Um, so we have a, uh, a multitude of different ways that we engage. We have uh, virtual exercises, in-person workshops, study sessions, um, online surveys, physical surveys. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of engagement thus far. There's a lot more to come as, as we continue with this plan. Uh, but the, the real hub for that is also going to be on our website um, where we will post about that. Um, and uh, translation services is also part of our, uh, our scope of work as well. So uh, having a Spanish translation and, and Punjabi translation for outreach materials is also something that um, we are scoped to prepare. Um, and if you go back to our previously prepared documents, we do have fully translated versions of everything thus far, and we will continue to do so um, throughout the remainder of the project. So next steps, um, this is the first step. So we are kicking off this uh, update again after it's been on hold, um, and we are at phase five where we left off, um, where we had uh, an initial preliminary discussion with city staff on potential growth alternatives. Um, those were never finalized, those were never daylighted, um, and now that we have uh, a new council, some new council members, and new uh, planning commission members, and the project has been on hold for so long, it's important that uh, we kind of restart that process um, and get community feedback um, and see where we should uh, start from. Um, then, question. I, a question, why was the project on hold? Who put it on hold and why? What was the rationale you received? It, it uh, was initially part of the um, change in staff because the, the staff that was providing us direction left and there was nobody to really guide the consultants. So we decided to just wait until the council was established and the new staff was on board so that we could get, we have to depend on staff to get a lot of daily, weekly directions. So that's the, that was the reason. So now that new staff is here, council in place, commission in place, we're ready to get going again. Sorry, uh, what, was there a lack of staff or uh, council or uh, planning commission at that time? Or was it just more of a, like a personality thing? Because I think we've been fully staffed. Uh, well, the city manager and the contract planner both left, and you've just recently replaced the city manager and, uh, and the contract planner. There was a, we had discussions with the first city manager replacement, but they uh, still needed to get staff on board and uh, the council set, so it was, it was a combination of things. And that was your decision or the council? It was, it was a staff direction. Staff was not, it was not, we don't make those decisions. Staff direction, thank you. Any other questions? At any time, feel free to answer questions or ask questions. So yeah, we, we, we stopped at phase five and, and that's where we remain. Um, and so we are very much at the, the beginning of the alternatives process. Um, this is where, as I had touched on earlier, we, we look at various alternatives for growth or non-growth. Um, we analyze what are the existing development standards, um, those specifically being dwelling units per acre, so how dense your neighborhoods are, and then FAR, which is your floor area ratio. That is, uh, if you had to think about how intense commercial areas are, your metric for that would be, would be floor area ratio. And so we develop a, a series of alternatives. Um, we do a geoanalysis to see, um, and we take into consideration a lot of assumptions on development, um, and we come up with hypothetical growth alternatives. Um, the, the way that that would then work is the, the council and commission would select a preferred alternative that the general plan would proceed forward with and base the rest of the analysis off of. Um, and then after phase five, as previously mentioned, we would prepare your various elements, um, have engagement throughout that, that phase, and then have a successful adoption um, in phase eight after, um, 
an environmental review, which at this point um, is about, we're looking at about a year for that. Um, it has, environmental review has been taking longer with new state laws um, and the analysis that is required uh, as part of CEQA. So it's not uncommon to see that one year mark being pushed um, further out these days. But uh, that is where we're really going to ensure uh, having a robust environmental review is where you're really going to ensure that uh, your, your plan is defensible, um, that is really addressing um, all the state mandates. Okay. Yes, so you can come up, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, and commissioners, chair, commissioner. Uh, my name is David Storer. Um, I retired from PERS uh, in December, uh, having 30 odd years as in the planning field. The reason I'm here tonight is I represent clients uh, in and around Livingston. Uh, it's great to hear that uh, the process has been reignited. Um, I just want to give you my experience because there's a train wreck coming to Livingston in the Central Valley in the terms of RENA. And Jim mentioned it, your regional housing needs analysis. Um, having just retired from four years in the city of Sonoma, we're going, we just went through the sixth cycle and received a humongous arena for that small community of 10,000 people. Our fifth cycle arena was 137 units. 330 was the new number. So if you can just compare apples to apples, you're going to be having a, a large number coming your way to find for housing in the city limits of the city of Livingston. So. Be prepared for that. There's a statewide, the governor has made it patently clear that he expects to see a lot of building of housing throughout the communities of California. A good thing. So I just wanted to kind of give that, Jim can speak more at it. And, um, you don't have to take my word for it, but that's that's a big issue. Train wreck is probably not the best word, but it's a, it's a thing that you haven't dealt with at that magnitude before, and it, it may come as a shock to you. So more of a comment, not so much of a question. Thank you.